If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be covering how your heating system works. I'll be covering gas combi and gas system boilers, which are the two most common types. Gas combi being by far the most common type. These principles will also apply to if you've got an oil boiler or a wood pellet boiler. I won't be covering specifics around anything like heat pumps. However, there are a lot of similarities with a system like I've got and those systems too. I'll walk you through how my system works step by step and why I set it up in the way that I did. Then I'll talk through the differences with the other types of systems. So we'll go to the boiler next to talk through that. So my boiler is a heat only boiler. So you've only got gas going in and then you've got flow and return for the central heating, which is also the same water that's used to then heat the cylinder for your hot water. Whereas in a combi, you've got hot and cold as well going in. So you've got your cold fresh water coming in, gets hot, goes out through your hot pipe to your tap. And the way that works is you've got flow switches in there. So when you turn a hot tap on a sink, flow switches on the boiler switch on, and cause the boiler to come on, get hot quickly and you get your instant hot water coming through. Whereas a system boiler like mine, it heats a cylinder that then supplies your hot water. So that cylinder is insulated, keeps the water warm and then feeds your taps whenever you need it. Perk of a combi boiler is you don't need the space for a cylinder and you've got that instant hot water. So it takes up a lot less space, which is why they're the most popular type. The reason I went for a system boiler like this, this house has two bathrooms. So that's why I've kept the system boiler and put in an unvented pressured cylinder instead. The perk of that over a combi boiler is that if you've got multiple bathrooms, you can have two people having a shower at a time and not have a problem with pressure. Whereas a combi boiler can't put out the same flow rate. So up at the top here, coming out the boiler, you can see you've got flow on the right there and your return on the left. And those are just automatic air vents there, just as the boiler pipes go under the floor to get to the cylinder so any air that gets trapped in this section can bleed out you can see occasionally it sprays out a bit of rusty water which isn't ideal but they're a pretty good thing to have one at the top could do with being replaced to be honest that one i replaced about 18 months ago this is then the cupboard under the boiler so that pipe on the right there that copper one that is the gas so that comes up in 28 mil gas and then drops down to 50 into the boiler. The white one on the right there is the condensate pipe, so it's a condensing boiler, and that has to be plastic because it's actually carbonic acid, the liquid that comes out, so if you make it in copper or anything else, the pipe will slowly burn through with the acid, so it needs to be a plastic pipe as that type of plastic doesn't get affected by acid. The condensate pipe then just goes outside to a drain just to drain away. Then on the left here, you can see you've got flow and return. The return is the one on the left and the flow is the one on the right. These just go under the floor and then go to the cylinder. On the left here, you've got this magnet lens, which basically just filters any crap out of the water on its way back from radiators or the cylinder, stop it getting into the boiler. If you haven't got one of these, it's worth getting one installed. And every year or so, you should just open it up and just clean it out. So we're back up in the cylinder cupboard where things are a little bit more interesting. So this pipe here, this is the flow from the boiler. So this is the pump. So this pulls the water through the boiler. So you've got hot water comes up through this pipe here. On either side of the pump, you've got these pump valves, And this is just to isolate it so you can take it off. So if you ever need to change this pump or service this, you can not have to drain down the whole system. So then we've got a hot water that's coming out of the pump here. So it's a flow from the boiler. So it goes into this four wave piece of copper here. And straight up is just an automatic air vent there. So it's just a bottle type. So when you're filling it, it just makes a lot easier. This on the left here is what's called an automatic bypass. In the event that the heating is on but none of your radiators are open so all your thermostats are open, you've basically got the boiler getting hot and the pump pumping but there's nowhere for the water to go. So to stop the boiler just overheating the water in the boiler, this bypass will open once you get a bit of a pressure differential. So the pressure differential is on, written on the top there. So I've got it set to 0.5 bar. So if you get a pressure differential between here and here of 0.5, this will open and this just allows water to bypass. So this here then goes back to the boiler. So this is primary return is what this pipe's called. So this just cycles back to the boiler and just allows that hot water to get away from the boiler. And then eventually it will turn itself off, but it just stops any overheating danger. Now 0.5, the setting that I've got here is actually quite high. You can just twist this to turn it down. But um, the reason I've got it on 0.5 is mine actually lets by a little bit. I think there's probably some crud stuck in there that is me meaning that it lets by a tiny bit constantly. And the reason I know that is because even when all these valves are open over here, this pipe still gets quite warm. Then going off to the right from this four-way copper piece, you come over to here and you've got these three 
what these are called zone valves. So these are motorized valves that when you turn on the heating or the hot water, one of these will open and then these go off to either the radiators or the cylinder. So my hot water is controlled by this timer here. So I only have it come on for about an hour a day at 5 a.m. But if I hit boost here, this clicks on and this goes into this wiring center here and then tells this valve to open. And I can see that it's open because this is loose. So that's open now. And it also tells this pump to click on, which then tells the boiler to turn on. And the other thing you've got with a unvented cylinder is you've got a thermostat here. So as long as the temperature in the tank at this low point in the tank is below this number, this will also allow power to pass through to the boiler for the boiler to click on. Now the difference is with this being open, as you can see this moves freely backwards and forward, whereas on these ones, you have to apply force to get it to open and then it automatically closes itself. So these are normally closed and then when power is applied, it opens up. Now the power's on, you've got your hot water coming up through the pump, through to this T-piece, across, then down. This valve is open, so it goes down this pipe here, and then that pipe goes round along there, and comes behind here, so it comes to here, then up, and you've got another automatic air vent here to let out any air stuck in the coil. Then it goes through here, see so it's primary coil, into the tank and then inside the tank there's a nice coil which the hot water flows through which is effectively a heat exchange so the hot water inside the coil in the tank warms the fresh water in this tank but the two don't mix and then it comes back out here got a drain off there which is useful to have back around the bottom here that bottom pipe all the way around and then it goes to here in the corner where it's a bit dusty and under there just tees in to that pipe and then goes off under the floor and this is what called is called our primary return so this pipe just goes back to the boiler now and then so this is your colder water going back to the boiler it gets hot then comes back up through this one to the pump and then can, carries on circulating like that to heat our hot water so now i'm just going to turn this hot water off You can see the valve down here has just closed, so I have to apply force to open it. Then next I'm going to turn our heating on. We've got a nest here, so this is just the other end of it. And that controls these two valves here, which you can see are now open as well, but the hot water one over here is closed, and you can see it closes automatically. So these two are open. Now this one on the left here is actually our heating upstairs and this is heating downstairs so we've got two zones so you don't have to have the whole house on at once you can just have one or both and then this one here goes off to all the upstairs radiators and this one here goes straight to downstairs radiators just means you can save a bit more money on heating so you're not heating rooms that you're not in now for two zones ordinarily people would have two nests and actually have two of these but i didn't want to pay for two of these because they're pretty expensive so how we have it set up is that the hot water on the nest actually operates the radiators upstairs and the heating on the nest is just downstairs heating which has the th nest thermostat downstairs. All the bedrooms upstairs have thermostats on the radiators anyway so it doesn't make a difference but just saves the money on that and it's easy to use on the app anyway. You can see this primary return actually has a reducing T on it and you've got this bit of 15 mil that goes up. So a bit of 15 goes all the way up to here and then it goes in to this which is our heating expansion vessel and also shows the pressure of the heating and you've got a filling loop there as well so up there is the expansion vessel probably a little bit oversized for the size of system but better safe than sorry we've got the space in this cupboard now the reason for having an expansion vessel is that water gets hot and it expands so you need somewhere for that to expand into and in there there is a it's kind of half air and half water and it just like compresses that bit of air so you've got a rubber diaphragm in there to split the two then under here you've got that see that little thing that says three bar that red thing that's a pressure relief valve. So if the pressure in the heating goes above three bar, this valve will open, which then goes off across down here into this tun dish, which is to a drain, and then just drains off. So it goes off under the floor 
to a drone. So those are just heating safety features. Now, if you have a combi boiler, you will have all of this stuff. It will just be within the boiler instead of separate. So you'll have one of these automatic relief valves. These are, it's called a PRV. And then you'll probably have a pressure gauge as well. Then you'll have somewhere as well to fill the system with fresh water. So that about covers the central heating system and hot water. So we'll move on to the drinking water and how that works. So this pipe here is the cold mains. This one comes in from outside from the water meter and comes through the floor to here and goes into this valve here. Now this is pinging around just because taps are on at the moment and appliances are on. And then from there it goes into what's called this combi valve. So this has a filter in it and it's got a strainer in it. So you should be emptying this once a year. So you just service it by undoing this and opening it up. And it's also a one way valve. So it stops anything going back into the water mains in case the water goes backwards for some reason. I can see appliances have gone off and the mains are settled at about four bar which is usually what it is, but overnight it can go up, up to kind of five or even six in the middle of the night when no one's using any water. Here, this is what's called balanced cold. So this pipe goes off here to the rest of the cold taps in the house. And these are just pegler valves, which are my personal favorite type. Yeah, you can see it jumps around when things are on or off. So here, that's your balanced cold. And then this one here, this is a pressure relief valve. So in the event that the pressure from the mains becomes too much or pressure inside the house builds up too high, this will blow. Can't actually see what this says on the side of it, but I'm pretty sure it's seven bar this blows at. And then goes to the same place, goes down into that tundish and drain. Bit of bad soldering there from me. Then up here, you can see we've got just under three bar. So this valve, this combi valve is designed to make the water three bar. And then up here, you go straight up on this kind of 180 bend and goes up to an expansion vessel there. Now the white expansion vessels are for drinking water and the red ones are for central heating. And so you can see this is the same setup, this one. So you've got a rubber diaphragm in here and the top half is air, the bottom half is water. And the reason you have that is hot water in the tank gets hot and expands and it needs somewhere to expand. So it just compresses the air in the top of this expansion vessel. Now these expansion vessels do need servicing annually. And the way you service it is just checking the pressure on the air inside. So you can see, it's, see it says pre-charge three bar so you just need to check the pressure. There's a valve on the top. And if not, you just pump it up, whereas this one is 1.5 bar for the heating. So then the other way from this T is down this pipe here. And it got a drain off there. And then here, it goes into the cylinder. And you can see that says cold inlet on the side there. So that's for cold water to go into the cylinder. And this is a drain off to drain the cylinder. Now you might see the position of that drain off being way above the base of the cylinder and think, how is that gonna empty the cylinder if you're draining from there? Cause it's only gonna empty above the drain off, not the bit below, but it actually siphons out cause this pipe in the inside goes down to the bottom. So it will just siphon out the whole tank. Then from there, that just pressurizes this tank and puts your cold water in then coil heats up the water because heat rises your hot water sits at the top and then it comes out of the top there and into that um, elbow there and T then down here and they've got an isolator so this is all the hot water for most of the house now I mentioned oil and wood pellet boilers at the start and they just work in exactly the same way so you have a system boiler like this which just heats water circulating around the heating, then heats a cylinder like the one behind me. Gas is the only thing that gets hot enough quickly, instantly, to be able to work in a combi boiler to give you instant hot water. All the other systems need a cylinder like this. So that concludes the video covering how central heating works. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe for more. And before anyone asks, this cylinder does have building reg sign off.